you were evacuated from your home without explanation. Half an hour later, you were brought back, and no one told you that you had just become part of a secret experiment with an atomic bomb. In fact, a nuclear bomb had just been detonated under your village, not in the name of war, but to put out a fire, a gas well that had been burning for a year. The plan was simple, to plug it with an explosion, but something went wrong, very wrong. The story you are about to hear is a real operation, secret, without local consent, without warning, without the right to ask questions. It was named Torch, and it changed everything. It all started in 1971, at one of the largest gas fields in the Soviet Union, an accident. During routine drilling, a blowout occurred. 400 atmospheres of pressure. A gas geyser pushed out the drilling derrick, throwing engineers from height. Two died. The next day, to avoid an explosion, the gas was ignited. This was meant to be a temporary measure, but the torch didn't go out. Day after day, night after night, the fire roared into the sky. The flame was visible for dozens of kilometers. Concrete, metal, water, nothing worked. The installation disappeared under the ground. When all the usual methods failed, Moscow remembered past experience. In Uzbekistan, they said, a well had somehow been extinguished with a nuclear explosion. And then a plan appeared to use the greatest force of humanity, not to destroy a city, but to plug the fire. The plan was approved at the highest level. Responsibility was placed not on engineers, but on the structures that managed the entire nuclear program of the USSR. They acted silently, and they acted quickly. Next to the burning well, they began drilling a new shaft. Depth, two and a half kilometers. It was supposed to come within just 20 meters of the fire. That's where the charge was lowered. A metal cylinder with the power of a quarter of Hiroshima. Around, safety zones were established. Three, five, and eight kilometers. The villages of Kreschische and Pervomaiske were evacuated. People weren't given any explanation. They were simply told, get on the bus. But the most terrifying thing was not those who were taken out, but those who were left behind. Goats, chickens, beehives with bees, Animals were intentionally placed in the explosion zone as test subjects. July 9th, 1972, 10 a.m. Weather, quiet, windless. Everyone who remained in the zone, military, operators, received instructions to stand on tiptoes, supposedly, so as not to break their spine from the shockwave. Everything was ready. At the command post, the command was given. Deep underground, the explosion detonated. Power, 3.8 kilotons. The earth trembled. For a second, silence fell. Perhaps even hope. We did it. But after 20 seconds, something happened that no one expected. The well did not go out. On the contrary, the fire erupted with new frantic force. A column of gas, rock, and flame burst from the earth. And above it, slowly, ominously, Against the clear sky, a mushroom cloud unfolded, dirty brown, radioactive. The bomb did not stop the fire. It made it even worse. 30 minutes after the explosion, the evacuated people were given the command to return without explanation, without protection. They were told, everything is fine, go home. And they went by bus on the same roads to the same yards where there were cracks in the walls, broken windows, fallen fences, and in the air, a strange metallic smell. But the main thing, silence. No one explained anything. Beehives, like dead. Bees fell to the ground without even taking off. Animals died on the spot. People knew nothing. They were told, the water is safe. Eat the vegetables, live on. No one said, you have just become part of a nuclear experiment and you are already breathing in its consequences. Life was meant to continue, as if nothing had happened. The state helped repair the roofs, install windows, but there was no talk of compensation for the risk, no recognition, no warning. Years passed, and with them, diagnoses appeared. Oncology, leukemia, young men, burned away by cancer. Women lost their children. Families buried each other. The secrecy was very high. 
people didn't know if it was coincidence or a consequence of torch. After the collapse of the USSR, the first testimonies appeared. They spoke of thousands of cancer cases, of generations that suffered, of a government that was silent and continues to be silent to this day. Some called it legalized Chernobyl, and this is no exaggeration. This is another form of catastrophe, only without recognition, without a documentary film, without memory. A new operation began. They dug a giant pit, 1,300 feet wide. They worked by hand in protective suits for 12 hours, almost a year. They were getting closer to the heart of the fire to shut down the well using conventional methods. And finally, they succeeded. The fire went out, but this victory too had its price. During the work, 11 liquidators died. They did not become heroes. Their names are not on memorials because officially nothing happened. Torch was not unique. This is just one fragment of a large project. Program number seven, the Soviet Union conducted nuclear explosions for decades, not for war, but for peaceful purposes. Detonations were carried out across the country to create underground gas storage facilities, crush ore, accelerate extraction, conduct seismic surveys, or, as in the case of Torch, to shut down emergency blowouts. All these explosions had code names, and almost all were accompanied by secrecy. Without warning the population, without analysis of long-term consequences, and often completely without understanding what exactly would happen after the explosion. The belief in control over the atom turned out to be a belief in an illusion. The story you have just heard was not officially publicized. It wasn't included in textbooks, wasn't discussed in the news. Under the pretext of science and progress, thousands of people became test subjects, not by consent, not with knowledge, simply because they were nearby. And there are dozens of such stories, perhaps hundreds. They are buried in archives, suppressed by the secret classification, or simply forgotten. What would you do if you found out your family was part of an experiment, without warning, without permission, just on a list, in one of the zones? We always expect nuclear mushroom cloud stories to be about Hiroshima, Chernobyl, but sometimes it's just a field somewhere in the steppe, and a bus taking you home, we're used to thinking that tragedies have names, Hiroshima, Chernobyl, Fukushima, but most of them never will. They live on in memories, in bodies, in medical records, in family stories not shared with outsiders. Perhaps you know someone whose illness started without explanation, someone whose grandmother was afraid of drinking water their whole life, someone who remembers being taken away from home for a day as a child, and no one ever explained why. 